You're watching KSWT 13 on your side. Good evening. Thanks for watching 13 on your side. First at four, I'm Caitlin Slater in for Janelle Confair. Former El Centro Mayor Jason Jackson was in court this morning battling to stay out of jail. 13 on your side, Roy Durantes is live there right now and brings us this update. Caitlin, during the court proceedings this morning in the Jackson case, both the district attorney's office and the defense attorney expressed surprise at the court's decision. The court granted former El Centro Jason Jackson this morning to remain free while his appeal continues to be reviewed by the appeals court. He was scheduled to start his 10-day jail sentence today on animal cruelty charges. Jackson also regained his right to keep pets. He can regain custody of his beloved cat. His defense attorney calls it a victory for them. They want to reverse the guilty plea and go to trial. Jackson says he pled guilty to animal cruelty charges thinking it would be a misdemeanor. He says his attorney at that time didn't explain to him the possible consequences of the plea deal. Now he wants to fight his case in a trial. If the Court of Appeal found in our favor that he should have been um, permitted to withdraw his plea, it would reinstate uh, the complaint and um, criminal proceedings would be restored from uh, where they were at. At this point in time, he is allowed to own, possess, or reside with um, pets, domestic animals. For the moment, Jackson remains one step ahead of jail time. He comes back to court on May the 1st. In El Centro, I'm Roy Durantes. And a Marine in San Diego was found dead on Monday at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. Lance Corporal David Gonzalez was assigned to 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing. He was found with a gunshot wound in his head. The 20-year-old joined the Marine Corps in 2016. An investigation is currently underway. And Border Patrol El Centro Sector says the area where the new border wall is being built is a hotbed of aggression for border agents. Reporter Roy Durantes explains how Border Patrol is trying to put the odds in their favor. 21 assaults against Border Patrol agents just this fiscal year right here, the highest number along the California southern border. We have a high volume of crossings in this area, so uh, there's a lot of cross-border uh, illicit activity that occurs here in this 2.25 mile stretch. Um, it is. It tends to be one of our more violent areas as far as agents being assaulted. Border Patrol El Centro sector officials say the area from the Calexico East Port of Entry to about one mile west of the outlets is the most dangerous one for them. If you looked at the border in sections, this section, that would account for the, the most assaults in, in any one particular area. It would range anywhere from rocks being thrown at, at our agents to physical altercations. They're responding with an enhanced border wall to give agents the upper hand. We believe that's going to make our agents safer, so um, they'll be able to see th some of the threats. As you can see, the, the differences in the old uh, wall compared to the new wall, combined with the technology, uh, the agents that we have here, and the, uh, the new infrastructure, we, we believe that's going to help us um, secure this area a little bit more and probably calm the area down. The project started nine years ago, but work began last year. This is actually a local tactical infrastructure project that uh, was initiated uh, by us back in, in 2009. The project is scheduled to be completed in October. The agency says this isn't part of President Trump's border wall project. And another retailer is responding in the wake of the Florida school massacre, banning gun sales to customers under the age of 21. The move comes as President Trump breaks with the NRA and fellow Republicans on gun control. And Florida Governor Rick Scott gives his plans on how to keep students safe. Wei Zhejiang reports from Washington, D.C. 
Following the deadly shooting at a Florida high school, Delta Airlines cuts ties with the National Rifle Association. Lawmakers from the state of Georgia scored a political victory Thursday over the airline company by denying them a hefty tax break after cutting ties with the NRA. With the discussion of gun control throughout the nation, 13 on your side wants to know your thoughts. Should Arizona companies be allowed to cut ties with the National Rifle Association and receive tax breaks? Weigh in on our topic of the the day either on Facebook, Twitter, or our website, kswt.com. And tonight we'll read some of your comments. Thanks, Erica. Now for a look at the bright side. Saddles of Joy has many great volunteers, but this one is extra special. 15-year-old Gabriella Paris devotes over 14 hours a week to help special needs children with the therapeutic horseback riding program here in Yuma. After her mother was diagnosed with cancer in 2009, she started attending online school through the Inside Academy of Arizona. Her flexible schedule gave Paris more time in which she chose to focus on ways to give back Back to the community. That's when Paris discovered Saddles of Joy and has volunteered there ever since. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. These are our rescue pigs. Overall, the main thing that sticks out is just the happiness out here. Just the love you feel. You don't get anywhere else like you do coming out to the ranch. Others' happiness brings her the most joy. She dreams of one day working in the medical field or being a physical therapist, but will always devote much of her time to volunteering. And if you've ever worked in the field picking fruits or vegetables, you know just how hard of a job that is. A special recognition of hardworking field workers called the Labor of Love program is thanking those who serve the ag industry. The efforts of these workers are being recognized by surprise lunches in the field and other acts of kindness. The nonprofit Yuma Fresh Vegetable Association through the Labor of Love showcases the workforce and thanks them for their hard work. I am grateful. It feels good to know that all of our hard work is being recognized. We pour our hearts out here day in and day out to meet the demand. Industry without the you know farm worker and you know the you know the farm worker is what gets our industry moving and going. And so basically, you know, we can't do it without the people. And you know, this is one way to recognize them and say thank you for what they've done for us. Depending on the year, there are 30 to 40,000 workers daily in the fields. Many of the workers cross the border from Mexico daily. And as Doug mentioned, Yuma Agriculture could not be the $6 billion industry it is without the skilled farm workers. Welcome back everyone. In recent years, the topic of concussions has been on an increase. In 2017, a neuropathologist examined the brains of 111 NFL players and all but one of those players were found to have a chronic traumatic disease known as CTE. This degenerative disease is linked to repeated blows to the head. 13 on your sides, Jasmine Arenas gives us an inside look at what professionals are doing to make sure kids are safer in contact sports. Sports. Concussions are not limited to the sport of football. They are also seen in women's soccer and other contact sports. Many professionals say the numbers have not gone up in recent years, but there is more awareness. They will continue to find ways to keep student athletes safe and educated. What? No gravy at KFC? That's the unthinkable problem facing fried chicken lovers in the United Kingdom. According to USA Today and other news outlets, the fast food chain announced Wednesday that UK stores are reporting a gravy shortage. The company said in a statement that it's working hard to fix the problem. USA Today reports that the shortage is being blamed on distribution chain and operational issues. It comes just after a chicken shortage forced the temporary closure of hundreds of stores in the UK last week. And there was a police chase in Arizona yesterday, but not the type you're probably thinking of. It may very well go down as the most adorable police chase you will ever see. John Schwimo explains. Today in the Hollywood Minute, an animated sneak peek, casting news for a big screen star, and what's bugging Will Smith? David Daniel has our roundup. And a baby chimpanzee rescued from poachers in the Congo has his flight to freedom recorded, and it is the cutest thing you'll see all week. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. If this adorable video does not give you all the feels, something wrong with you. 
It's of a baby chimpanzee flying to his new home after being saved from poachers in the Congo. The organization Luwiro Primates, along with Virunga National Park, made it happen. The chimp, named Musa, seems to enjoy the ride. He helps with the flight controls, shares some tender bonding moments with the pilot, and even squeezes in a nap. Luwiro Primates strives to protect wildlife populations and battle illegal trade. The nonprofit organization says this was their third successful rescue of 2018. Welcome back. Former El Centro Mayor Jason Jackson was in court this morning battling to stay out of jail. 13 on your side, Roy Durantes is live there right now and brings us the latest. Thank you so much for that report, Roy. And a Marine in San Diego was found dead on Monday at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. Lance Corporal David Gonzalez was assigned to 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing. He was found with a gunshot wound in his head. The 20-year-old joined the Marine Corps in 2016. An investigation is currently underway. And Border Patrol El Centro Sector says the area where the new border wall is being built is a hotbed for aggression for border agents. Reporter Roy Durantes explains how Border Patrol is trying to put the odds in their favor. The project is scheduled to be completed in October. The agency says this isn't part of President Trump's border wall project. And a new park is in the works in the city of Somerton near the base of the city's iconic water tower. 13 on your sides, Jasmine Arenas was at the groundbreaking of this park and brings us the details. Jasmine. That is right, Kaylin. The park is called Centennial Park. This after the city was awarded and approved of a contract in December. The park comes with the anniversary of the city's 100th year celebration. As an Arizona city, Mayor Yepes says this future park used to be a baseball park, a summer school spot, and even had a pool. Now some cool features of the new Centennial Park include the construction of a water splash fountain in the children's play area and a possible Summerton historic exhibition. Vision Museum. The city manager says he hopes this new park becomes a staple for the city of Somerton. This is a, a symbol of the culture of Somerton, not only reflects the history of the city, but also the people that we used to live over here. So the young generations be able to understand what happened before and what is happening now and where we're going in the future. Now, this new park is expected to open this June. Reporting for 13 on your side, Jasmine Arenas. And another retailer is responding in the wake of the Florida school massacre banning gun sales to customers under the age of 21. The move comes as President Trump breaks the NRA breaks with the NRA and fellow Republicans on gun control and Florida Governor Rick Scott gives his plans on how to keep students safe. Wei Zhejiang reports from Washington, D.C. Following the deadly shooting at a Florida high school, Delta Airlines cuts ties with the National Rifle Association. Lawmakers from the state of Georgia scored a political victory Thursday over the airline company by denying them a hefty tax break after cutting ties with the NRA. With the discussion of gun control throughout the nation, 13 on your side wants to know what your thoughts are and should Arizona companies be allowed to cut ties with the National Rifle Association and receive tax breaks? Weigh in on our topic of the day either on Facebook, Twitter, or our website kswt.com and tonight we'll read some of your comments at 10. Happy Thursday, everyone. We have our Nissan Tower Cam here. It's a clear day out there. We see those blue skies again. Let's take a look at our current temperatures right now, though. We're at 69 degrees here in Yuma, 68 in El Centro, and 69 degrees in Blythe. Welcome back, everyone. Now we have an inside look at the new movie Red Sparrow, starring Jennifer Lawrence. Kevin Frazier from Entertainment Tonight has more. <laughs> 